everybody, and welcome to Noon on Tuesday. It is Gina here. Happy to have you on board today as we are going to talk about um, really one of the most popular California cheesemakers. Um, but before we do that, I guess a, qu a quick, you know, hearts out to um, a lot of the people in Napa, Sonoma, and Mendocino County um, who are fighting fires right now, and a lot of cheesemakers are affected. And we're just wanting to say, hope everybody stays safe, um, takes care, and I uh, hope everything um, resolve soon, I guess. I don't know how best to say it. Um, but on that note, um, we're going to talk today about Cypress Grove. We're going to talk to a very good friend of mine, a Cypress Grover named Bob McCall. Welcome, Bob. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Bob is the trade development director for Cypress Grove, um, which is one of the, the oldest now and most renowned creameries in California. Um, most people that are big cheese fans know Humboldt Fog from Cypress Grove, and it is the most beloved and well-known cheeses made in California. Can we say that, Bob, pretty much? Well, you can, you can go further than that. Further. You can say it is America's best-known and most widely distributed uh, American artisan cheese. Bravo. Congratulations. I know. That's awesome. We call it, we call it the original American original. The original American original. I like it. <laughs> Somebody's got to be that, and kudos that it's you. Oh, my gosh. Original hey. American <laughs> original. Well, awesome, awesome. Um, tell us, Bob, I mean, a little bit how it started because, I, I don't know. No, no, first. I'm a little scrambled today. Bob, tell us a little bit about you. Well, um, I've worked for Cypress Grove for 11 years now. My wife and I moved up to Humboldt County after 9-11. We were living in the Bay Area, and we wanted to uh, – moved to a more rural place and kind of get away from it all. Mm -hmm. And I've lived up here uh, since uh, 2001 and, um, and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I've worked in the food industry before. And I was going to bed uh, one night, and on the nightstand is this uh, uh, Help Wanted ad. And I go, what's this? And my wife said, apply for this or I'll divorce you. <laughs> and, uh, That's awesome. And uh, she, you know, how wives realize that husbands are miserable before they do. And then my previous job, she, she didn't think I was uh, seeing uh, my full, my reaching my full capabilities. And uh, so I applied at Cypress Grove, got the job and I've just, just loved it ever since. It's been the longest job I've ever had. And, oh my gosh. Uh, and the one I've, I've enjoyed the most by far. Yeah. That is so awesome. And 11 years, kudos to your wife. I'm gonna have to meet her. Well done. Yeah. yeah look at that for me. <laughs> well done. Well done. Um, so Cypress Grove now, how long have they been around? Oh, since 83. It's been a long time, over long 30 time. years. Isn't that something? And um, correct me if I'm wrong, so the, the head cheesemaker, Mary Keene, um, first started just kind of with her own goats making cheese for her family. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, her youngest daughter was allergic to um, cow's milk, and so she found um, a couple goats from a neighbor and started uh, milking them. And ended up breeding them and showing them, winning the blue ribbon. And then with all the extra uh, milk she had, uh, just ended up starting making some cheese. Yes. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. That is so crazy. Was um, Now, Humboldt Fog couldn't have been the first cheese that she made. No, she was making fresh cheeses mm -hmm. and uh, selling them only in, in Humboldt County. And back then, Humboldt County had 130,000 people spread over a huge county. I think it's uh, one person per 13 acres. Wow. And, uh, and right now, there's 130,000 people in Humboldt County. Is it really? Spread one person. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't grow. Yeah. yeah. You come in and a few go out. And uh, uh, so, you know, she needed to, if she was going to really make a living out of this, had to start selling in the Bay Area. And uh, so she did it through Columbia and um or through columbus excuse me mm -hmm. and um and and then she and then uh humble fog came along and the whole artisan cheese movement uh, uh got got a, a big uh, boost and started uh, a lot of people started taking interest in american artisan cheese and she had uh, humble fog right at the right time and in fact you could say one one goes hand in hand with the other yeah that's really something like timing is everything in a way right is that something? Yes, exactly. Right, and one one um, with the other. Um, the inspiration then behind Humboldt Fog, where did that come from? 
Oh, that's the the best story ever. Uh, Mary was, um, like I said, uh, selling fresh chev and uh, and doing okay, but kind of struggling mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was at that point a single mom of four daughters, and she went to France and uh, and visited a few creameries and learned a little bit. Uh, about uh, cheeses and and was introduced to a cheese called Morbier, uh-huh. which we all know has a line of ash in it. On the way home, she's pooped and jet lagged in a jet and <laughs> fell asleep and had a dream of um, of the, how the fog in Humboldt County, when the when the sun comes up in the morning, it compresses and you get this thin line of fog that stands up against the uh, uh, green hills with the redwoods on it, and it made her homesick and. And but then she, in her dream, fully realized the concept of Humboldt fog, and that line of fog became mm-hmm. the line of ash. And she f- completely woke up with the idea of what she was going to do, and created Humboldt fog. And so cream. it was a trademarkable dream. Yeah, that is just that's ah. awesome. A true inspiration. Ah, right, right in the night. Imagine that. So your dreams, everybody, can can change your life, <laughs> right? If you're, Mary, the world. if you're Mary Keen. Yeah. If you're Mary Keen, and then we'll get it done. That is just awesome. Tell us about, okay, I, I've actually had the opportunity and so great to visit you guys up there in Arcata, Humboldt County, and I saw that fog. That really is a line. That's something to see. Yes. We, we don't get that here So in San Diego, so it was really, really cool to see. Um, so it, Humboldt fog does truly capture what it looks like in Humboldt County. Tell us about a little bit about this ash. What is it made of? It is a vegetable ash mm-hmm. in the context of animal, mineral, and vegetable. You know, when people say, okay. sometimes you say vegetable, and they go, oh, what, carrots, broccoli? It's like, no, it's it's of the vegetable family. It can be a tree. It can be coconut holes. It's burned so long and so hot that truly it it, it doesn't matter what it is. It, it, it becomes ash. It's inert. It's not, it's nothing but that. It's odorless yeah. and and tasteless, but yeah. it does affect the uh, pH, and on the outside, it gives the mold uh, something to find purchase and grow on. Oh, so that's it, it interesting. Serves a purpose. Yeah, because besides the aesthetics, it, sure. Yeah, yeah, serves a good purpose, and that's something I think. Um, next time anybody grabs a wedge of Humboldt fog, you do see, of course, the line in the center, but you do have to, you know, look on the very outer rind edge to see the other line of ash and that's what you're saying gets put on that um, encourages the growth of the bloomy rind on the outside is that right yeah that's correct yeah our new brochure uh, has a, a, a life stage photo a series of photos where one is just the curd when it's formed into the wheel without any ash huh. and the ash on the outside and then when the bloomy rind starts to develop and you see it almost looks like little pieces of cotton here and there Mm. and then as it grows throughout the the whole uh shelf life and the ending one is a very very mature uh humble fog it's it's really educational it's fun uh a fun little brochure to look at oh that's awesome the magic of right the science and the magic of cheese right (laughs) yes we have an idea of uh creating a one of those flip card things to show humble fog oh, yeah. from start to finish. Oh, that would be beautiful, beautiful. I can personally say I saw the the beginnings of Humboldt fog, and it still, is it true, made pretty much by hand. That's what I saw. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, you know, with a, with a few things have been uh, changed a little bit, but uh, by and large it's made by hand, and uh, each one, and it is hard work. Um, I've, I've I'd love to uh, watch somebody who's new uh, try to make one standing side by side with some of our uh, our experts and and to see them to see what they do and how quickly they do it and how expertly they do it. It's it's really it's a thing of beauty. It's a craft. Oh, that is so cool, Bob. Yeah, because literally, um, I remember them pound having to pound in the fresh curds. Yep. spin them all around, um, put on the ash, but then they had to flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. And some of these guys were doing it like faster than I can describe, <laughs> right? Faster than yeah. you just said that. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, faster than it said, the wheel is done. I'm going to repost, if I may, I, when I visited you, took a little video kind of showing the, the whole production of it. It's really, really cool. I'll put it on noonontuesday.com. Um, so you can see this video of the production, and it's just 
super cool that something of such high volume that's getting shipped all over the country is made here in California by hand, by people that really, really care about it. They sure do. That's yeah. A little put, you know. And, oh, and you know, okay, was this still true? I thought I remember you saying that if we get a wheel and we cut it in half, the straighter the line, the more expert the cheesemaker? That's true. Yeah. yeah. So and you, you could tell the you could tell the beginners too. It looks like a, a heart attack. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> or or a recession or, or, or a something. Depression. Yeah. <laughs> still delicious, still beautiful and delicious. But yeah, we kind of do that Everyone, every time. Everyone's a snowflake. Yeah. Oh, that's super good. We do cut it now. Every time we're like, oh, expert. Oh, newbie. <laughs> when we cut the wheel. It makes it so fun to cut into it, right? It makes it so, so, so fun. Yeah. The reveal. Um, the reveal. Exactly. Tell us a little bit. I know what we've got coming up, and we haven't received them yet, but the Humboldt remix? That is a fun story, too. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have a, a, a great – because of you know, our founder uh, – Mary, I believe we have a company that uh, that encourages creativity, and when somebody screws up, doesn't uh, doesn't emphasize the blame. And uh, we have a guy who's worked here for a, a number of years, uh, probably as long as I have. Name is Effa Henio, and he was just messing around one day with cheese, and he mixed the herbs that go into our fresh Chev purple haze which is lavender and fennel pollen, mm. and he mixed that into curd and made a cheese out of it. And it wasn't a line. It was just mixed in. And it was delicious and really fun. And just you kind of yeah. opened up some ideas. And then we were kind of coming up with some new ideas, and we remembered that cheese. And that just morphed into taking the same um, – the same herbs, but instead of mixing it in with the curd, using making it a line of ash, so we continue Ugh. that concept of the of the humble fog and borrow that 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 yeah. beautiful aesthetic from the, the humble fog, and it worked, and uh, yeah. it it tasted great. There was a the, the enough of the flavor came out of the herbs and and permeated into the uh, the body of the cheese, yeah. but not too much. And it's and made a three pounder. We made it a little uh, slightly different size. Yeah, okay. And um, and just and we're and it's a temporary, you know, limited edition thing that goes for three months, and, and then we'll That's be it. having another one oh. in February. Oh, we'll, yeah, that'll be the site from our from our fresh chev psychedelic, which is obviously dill. Oh, it has uh, dill weed and dill pollen, and it it did that to me. I was predisposed to wonder if the dill would taste good because the cheese is so acidic and I thought hmm, I wonder yeah. it really works great oh, it, fun. It, it, I think I like it better than the current one we're doing not nah, interesting so what flavors and what a good thing to look forward to to have all these variations coming out yeah exactly yeah well, well the people that like our fresh chef are now kind of looking at the uh they go wow I want to try that and vice versa yeah. Uh, so the people that have just been buying Humble Fog and trying that those haze flavors, yes. those purple haze flavors, are now interested in fresh chef. So everybody's oh, happy. Everybody's happy. So s delicious, obviously, all of these varieties and cheeses. And then we cannot emphasize enough how beautiful these wheels are, right? And which leads us to they really make the best cheese cakes. Wheels of Humble Fog. They and now this little totally remix. Did. Yeah, right? Beautiful. So what we're talking about, and if anybody, yeah. Give, you have to give credit where credit is due. We found out about uh, the, the the cheesecakes from you. Oh, my so, gosh. Well, <laughs> it's a good so team effort. <laughs> Thank you. It was so, so many years ago. About, oh, my gosh. You know, that's now um, almost 10 years ago, can I say? I think it was almost 10 years ago when we first, yeah, it collaborated was, yeah. on this. This is so cool. And, um the the concept came up is because people wanted cheese for their wedding cake because people are like, I don't want a cake, but I want a cheese cake. So we're like, oh, well, obviously what's going to be the most beautiful base of this cake is Humboldt Fog. And now I've seen so many variations of it. Real stunning. You must too. You must see some every every week, right? We do. We get a lot of we, we get a lot of press. Uh, yeah. and we, we it's become so popular. We created uh, on our website. You can buy everything you need. Uh, uh, for the oh, for nice. for your for the cheesecake and and people use it for uh, most often for weddings and right. we like to say that uh, 
you, nobody ever remembers the cake from a wedding. You know, they'll remember the dress or mm-hmm. who's there or who got drunk and made a fool of themselves. <laughs> but you will remember, you will remember this cheesecake. Oh. And, uh, and with the using soft ripened cheeses like ours, you can cut them. It's easy to cut. I've seen nice. some beautiful ones with, with like, Gouda's or bandaged cheddars and stuff, and I look at those. And I go, well, that's gorgeous, and I like that. But how do you? How does that work? How do you? How in application? How do you actually right. cut that up at a wedding? But super um, good with, point. With the cheese wire, the the guests can even cut it themselves if you want. Yeah. So and then that's so, yeah. We're, we're getting yeah. a lot of play on that. Oh, that's so good. How fun is that, right? <laughs> on top of it all, awesome, awesome. Um, do you still make a small, small version of Humboldt Fog? Like a tea we do, one? yeah. We do. We it, we uh, have a one pound version mm-hmm. of it, and the normal the the regular humble fog is five pound, mm-hmm. and then the we stack the cake is a five pounder on the bottom, then a three pound truffle tremor, mm. and then a one pound mini humble fog on top of that. Uh. And in recent years, we've come out with a one pound truffle tremor as mm-hmm. well, and it has a a smaller diameter than the one pound. Humble Fog Mini, so it actually nests on top of that pretty well if you need that much cheese. Right. That's a um, lot of cheese and, and, and a lot of tears. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Like, not crying tears, but tears of a cake, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Trouble Tremor. That's right. Tell us about Trouble Tremor. How do, who decided on this one? Well, that would be that woman, Mary, again. Uh, she was trying to make uh, a fresh shell, actually, because uh, she wanted to uh, with a, a new flavor for a fresh chef line. And so she got some uh, some truffles, mm-hmm. mixed it, and it would sit around for a while and then warm up the room temperature. And people tried it, and it was horrible. It, it just did mm-hmm. not taste good at all. Neither neither the chef nor the truffles tasted like they do separately. They fought each other, and it was bad. So uh, we're all ready to just throw the turn out. And uh, the owner, Mary, Says well, at least you know, put it in, and put some, uh, uh, put some, uh, some uh, mold on it, and see if it makes it. Makes it, makes it makes a soft wrap and cheese, and I just seemed at the time it was so bad that just seemed like compounding the problem. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I, I, mean, I and probably anybody else involved had forgot about it. Uh, three weeks later, Mary pulls. We made she made several different sizes and pulled them all out and uh, brought them in and, and again let them warm up and we sat around and tasted the tasted it and it was those moments where i do not it was four or five seconds went by without anybody saying anything <laughs> and i don't remember who said it but somebody just said wow this is a winner or you got a winner something like that it was a fun moment uh, yeah point of discovery where you just went this is fantastic where the two of them were are so harmonious. They're both earthy flavors and they neither of them overwhelm each other at any time and they taper out together. Yeah. It's, uh, just a, it's like a, an old couple that ties together in the hospital holding hands. <laughs> That's Wait a good a way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like just perfect to the end from the beginning, start to finish. Yeah. Perfect. Just perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, truffles. And oh, I mean, because a lot of truffle cheeses are very powerful with the truffle. But I find, like you said, truffle tremor to marry the cream just of the cheese with the truffle flavor. So you're exactly right. It's yeah. a good balance. Good, good balance. Also well, good it, on a cheesecake. It's, yes. <laughs> it's versatile to it. And you can uh, all kinds of pairings with that. And it'll it'll stand into a red wine, which most of our cheeses are really want a bubbly or a white wine. And uh, you can... You can do a young Pinot or, uh, or a, young, a Pinot or a young Zinfandel with uh, with uh, with truffle tremor. It works great. And you know what I recall learning the last time we visited you, Bob, is that Coca Cola also goes very well with truffle tremor. I know. <laughs> As it I recall, does. it does. I know, and that's just I was I was thinking of saying that, but it just it sounds so weird. You, have, yeah. you just have to you have to try it. Though. You, you have to try it, everybody. Please, if there's one thing you take away now, grab a hunk of trouble tremor and a, some cola. Your cola of your choice. This was delicious. I would have never ever ever put those together, but thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, that was super my fun. Yeah, that was that's really really great. 
Um, the, the, the milk that you guys get now, I mean, do you have your own goats and uh, own farm? We got to visit it, and this is all owned by Cypress Grove now, yeah? Yes, it is. This is one of the benefits of uh, being um, uh, owned by Emmy, as, mm-hmm. um, and I probably you're probably going to get to that yeah. later. But uh, we, you know, when Mary was um, uh, getting close to retirement age and uh, and and looking, I, I can't talk about the dairy without talking about you know, about Emmy and the and the positive sure. influence they've had on our company. Uh, the, the banks just don't loan money on on goat dairies. Mm. It tends to be people doing it by the bootstrap, and uh, and even uh, even getting funding for the creamery was difficult. And uh, so when uh, Emmy came along and purchased Mary, she said she had some prerequisites, and she said you have to leave us in Humboldt County, you have to keep the same people. And you have to invest in our in our company, mm-hmm. and they were game for all of those things. And we have a new creamery, well, it's three years old now, and um, and then the dairy is a little bit older, but it is fantastic. We we've uh, grown it to uh, three barns now. Mm-hmm. Um, the um, uh, it, it is the the goats are producing well over the the um, um, average here in California. The milk is a superior quality and the goats are you know it, it matters but they are happy you know the whole cow <laughs> yes thing. there are These happy goats, goats are, too goats are very intelligent <laughs> animals if yeah. they're not happy they don't tend to be healthy or give good milk mm-hmm. and uh, ryan our, our herd manager is a real stickler for animal husbandry we've had uh two straight years of uh humane certification at 100 percent when we got the first 100%, they said nobody's got that before. So nice. getting it a second year in a row was really, uh, really good. And then the, our uh, infant mortality is negligible. We're just uh, running a great uh, world-class goat dairy. And, and, in fact, we've had people from China come see it. Wow. We've had our competitors come see it. Goat dairy, there just isn't an infrastructure mm-hmm. in America. So Emmy um, – said let's let's help let's help the whole industry and and let's let's apply some basic principles sure. here and see what happens and uh and sure enough the cost per gallon is going down yeah. uh as each year goes by and things get depreciated mm-hmm. and we're very very happy with what we call our our goat country club up there the they're, goat country they're club <laughs> they're living in tall cotton <laughs> that's it's not bad they've got a great scene i recall yeah, they do. That's really good. How, about how many, Bob? Do you have now? Uh, I, you know, you uh, I lost track. I think we're like about eight hundred milking what? girls now. Wow! Yeah, yeah. that's got to be one of the biggest ones in the state. No, Say I think again? that's a lot of goats. That, I, I'm sorry, I could, can't hear you that is a over lot all of goats. the goats. I, I, couldn't he- <laughs> I couldn't hear you because there were so many. So goats. many goats. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's got to be one of the biggest in the state, right? That many? Um, you Gosh. know, there's a lot of, there's quite a few. Yeah, um, okay. Um, there's quite, a, and, and we're learning more about them. Yeah. Because uh, Emmy has also purchased Redwood Hill, who has a lot of uh, uh, established ties with goat dairies in uh, California sure. and uh, Nevada. Yeah. And then, uh, so so we're, we're getting milk from some of their sources. Well. Okay, I was going to ask because you use all the milk yourselves, right? For all the humble, uh, the Cypress Grove cheeses from your herd. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And then also need yeah. more. <laughs> okay, we do. Yeah. Okay. We have several. We have several in Southern Oregon, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and and one in Nevada. And like I said, we're getting like we Hill as well. Yeah. And uh, and and Emmy also recently purchased my herd, which is uh, a, a large goat milk. Uh, producer down in Southern California, and they um, are in Turlock, I should say, mm-hmm. and uh, they um, have all, obviously access to uh, milk from a lot of areas as well. Yeah, and we uh, we're, so That's we're uh, we 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 get as much as much milk as we. Then you can need. Oh, that's that's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. For those of you not familiar with Emmy, Emmy is it's Swiss based company, is it? Bob Swiss? Yes. Yeah, that's what yep. I thought. And they're, they're, you know, a huge uh, corporation that produce. They 
themselves produce a lot of cheeses and they distribute a lot of cheeses. So my question is, will we start seeing Humboldt Fog or some of the other Cypress cheeses, say, in France or Italy? You know, there's a little bit of that now going on, mm -hmm. but it's it's um, shelf life is, mm. is, a, is, is a concern. And, sure. and if you, you put it in a container and ship it across the ocean, by the time it gets there, it's got precious little life on it. Yeah. And then if you put it on an airplane and fly it over there, you've added uh, many, many dollars per pound sure. and you sort of price yourself out. But uh, uh, there is some, uh, there are some efforts right now in some of some uh, real special stores um, to s selling some of, of American cheeses like us yeah. and Rogue and, uh, uh, and I think Jasper Hill, sure. and uh, and and they're it's, they're they're responding pretty well, but it, there's a lot of yeah logistics, of, uh, huh? logistics. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. We always dreamed we're like, uh, can we open an American cheese shop in Paris? But then it's like, yeah, the logistics yeah. of getting it all over there. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah, the idea is wonderful, but uh, right. it's, it's tough. Yeah, well, we'll keep noodling, keep noodling, keep noodling. Now, I yeah. know, yes, we know all about Bob, you know, of course, Humboldt Fog, most famous, but I don't know if other people know that you also have a sheep milk cheese in your collection. And the question we had posed to people is, what do you get when you cross a little lamb with a chopper? Yes, you get lamb chopper, uh -huh. which is our uh, sheep milk Gouda style cheese from Holland. Yes, which, uh, came out of the relationship that Mary struck up with a, a man in um, uh, in uh, Holland, uh -huh. who she met at a trade show. Went over, visited him, saw his goats, and uh, they started talking about uh, uh, goat Gouda. Mm -hmm. And uh, she she uh, uh, met with a cheese manufacturer. They worked for years on uh, what they would sell over here and what the, the recipe would be, and finally uh, worked those details out, and that's what Midnight Moon. Uh, oh, uh, we, that's how Midnight Moon came uh, about. And then uh, that person, that same uh, manufacturer, said, "Hey, we also make this this great sheep's milk Gouda," and um, and it was good. There wasn't really one in the United States at that time, and Mary introduced both. Uh, uh, the goat milk gouda and the sheep milk gouda to America, mm -hmm. and is my is my understanding, and uh, and they're, those do well for us, and uh, the especially the midnight moon is just it's an phenomenal. unqualified success. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a world class cheese. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, I and, love them. They're and so... lamb chopper is my favorite. Lamb chopper is so good. Like it's creamy, dreamy to me. It doesn't have that um, strong sweetness that a lot of the goudas have. You know what I'm saying? The really caramel yes strong strong caramels it's more to me just this beautiful rich cream oh, it just captures the true essence of the milk i think um and delicious. the mouth feel is just yeah mouth feel is just unparalleled yeah. right you know what we've done bob and i'll have to send you a picture too is taken um, a wheel of lamb chopper and cut it um horizontally and then you know you see the Italian chefs take a big wheel of parmigiano reggiano and do that hollow out the center and make pasta inside so we've yeah. done that with lamb chopper. It's delicious. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's wow. really, really good. And I'll send you a picture. I'll post it, everybody. But we've done it like with a little, like these sausage meatballs inside and pasta. And then you can only do it a few times because, you know, then the cheese melts and gets all over it. Um, but it holds a shape pretty good, the little bowl. And it's not so deep. And it's a beautiful presentation. If you're having like a dinner party or something. I can't recommend it. I, I'm gonna have to like post this recipe, or just I'll, I'll definitely send it to you and post it uh, on our, on the blog because um, really a delicious. You got to try it. You got to try it. I think I will this Saturday. We have people coming over. I've been thinking you... of an of ideas, so I love that. Ah, I'll send it to you. Tell me what you think. Do you have a source for okay. lamb chopper? You got a good. You got a good in. <laughs> I you know I can sneak in after uh, after hours. <laughs> find some yeah that's perfect that's perfect bob i love it i love it what do you think what what's uh what's next what's next on the horizon for cypress grove or anything new to share that might be coming uh not this year because we're towards the end but mm -hmm. very beginning in in february you'll see that uh, new version of the remix the limited okay. edition remix with the with the dill uh, flavor and then sometime next year, I can't give you details, but we'll be coming out with something 
pretty unique to us okay and very tasty we're we're working out all the details and making sure that it is perfect and delicious but uh It'll be fun. You, oh my gosh. you will like it. No doubt it will be. Everything you guys do is so fun, Bob. Thank you for taking the time to just share the story um, with everyone. Everyone, if you haven't tried these cheeses, I can't believe it because I think I think I feel that everybody has, but come and try them. They're all delicious. Um, say hello to everybody at Cypress Grove. Hope we can make it back up to, to Northern California someday soon. Um, in the meantime, Bob, take Any, care. Anytime. Sounds good. Anytime. That sure was a fun visit. And yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. You've given us a call. Oh, of course. And we'll talk Take again care. soon. All right. Cheers. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Do the dance, Bob. Do the dance. Do the dance. <laughs>